Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I will be ranking the Batman villains from the live action movies. So I've got them all here. I've got a tier list. I'm going to put them in there. I'm going to explain why I put them in each tier and what I like about them. And then yeah, so let me know in the comments below what did you guys think of my list and what are your favourites? Where do you rank these villains? I'm pretty sure I got them all. I hope so. I think so. I don't know. But if I haven't, just let me know in the comments below. Don't bash me about it or anything. Just just give me a little, oh, you missed this guy. Where would you put him? And I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly where I put him. And if you want reasoning, I'll let you know. So smash that like button, click subscribe, and let's jump into this video right now. The will to act. So we're going to start off with Ra's al Ghul from Batman Begins. Look, I love Batman Begins. I think it's an absolutely fantastic origin story for Batman. And that comes down to the character of Ra's al Ghul himself. The man that teaches Batman to be Batman. Gives him the fundamental keys he needs to become the Dark Knight himself. And what I like about Ra's al Ghul is he has motive to why he wants to do certain things. He's not just this typical villain that just wants destruction, power, or anything like that. He has a set goal, and he has beliefs that line up with those goals. For instance, he wants to take Gotham down because of the crime, because he thinks it's a lost city, it's a lost cause, you can't change it. So the only way to change it is to extinguish what is to be able to rebuild something else. Now, I think Liam Neeson does a fantastic job portraying this character. I really like the uh, philosophy that he has moving forward with Batman and how that first exchange when he's training Batman, how he instills all that stuff onto Batman, the idea that you need to be something bigger, you need to be a symbol. I really like that. So where would I put Ra's al Ghul in our tier list? Let's go over and have a look where I would put it. So for me, Ra's al Ghul goes in the God tier. I think he's absolutely fantastic. One of my favorite villains of Batman movies. So for me, he goes in the God tier. <laughs> Great speech, Oswald. Oh, my name is not Oswald. It's Penguin. Now we get to Danny DeVito's Penguin from Batman Returns. I don't mind Batman Returns. I quite like it. And I think Danny DeVito's portrayal on Penguin is a disgusting one, but why a fun and energetic one as well. And it fits in line with the character in himself. Now, Batman Begins is a bit more dark and gritty than some Batman movies as well. And... The way that Danny DeVito plays Penguin is absolutely grotesque. It is. Like, from the design, is just absolutely disgusting. From the hands, I mean, that's gross. The way he eats the fish, how he's living down in the cold, freezing cold there underneath in the sewers. It's just, it's just one of those villains that you just, ugh, it just creeps you out a lot. But I like his portrayal. I like his motives in the movie as well. And I think he is a good villain. It wouldn't have been one of my villains to bring in after seeing Joker with Jack Nicholson. I thought they wouldn't have done that, but they did. They brought him in and it worked. It worked for Batman Returns and I'm glad we got this incarnation of Penguin as well. But where do I rank him? That is the question you guys want to know. Let's go have a look. Now for me, Danny DeVito's Penguin, I'm going to put in the decent tier as well. I really like his character. I think it's good. The design, it's grotesque. It fits the character and it really does bring out Penguin when I see him. I'm um, probably not very frightening to a guy like you, but these crazies, you can't stand it. Now we move to Scarecrow from Batman Begins with Killian Murphy playing him in the Nolan trilogy. Look, Scarecrow to me worked. It, well, he worked in Batman Begins. He's not the main villain, but he is a side villain as well. So he does what, he's ne what is necessary of him to portray the story and move it along. And I think the way Killian Murphy played Scarecrow was menacing. He was really this scientific person that was like, you know, a bit like, oh, do I trust him or do I not? And then when he does that big switch at the end there with his fear gas, it just kind of all brought him together and brought out Scarecrow. And it really gave us the true indication of what is really his character's motive and where he's going with that character and I think he was good as well. He's not a major villain but it works for me so where do I rank Scarecrow? Let's have a look. For me, Scarecrow goes in the decent tier as well. I think he's decent but he's not a main villain, he's a secondary villain and he works as that. I don't know if he would work as a main villain so for me he just sits in decent. <laughs> Huh? 
Now we move to Jim Carrey's Riddler from Batman Forever. A very interesting take on Riddler. Now, for me, I actually enjoyed Jim Carrey's performance as Riddler. And it works in the movie because the movie Batman Forever is this more fantasy-like comic book, out of this world, suspend belief movie. And Jim Carrey really portrays Jim Carrey in this movie. He's very wacky as Riddler. He's very on edge, nervy. You don't know what he's going to do. He's so unpredictable. His motives are all there. It just looks really, really good. The costume is very <laughs> comic booky, if you want to say. This whole big green <laughs> suit. Lycra suit that has the question marks on there with his big question mark cane, his red hair, his glasses. He was really a cool villain and he really fit in that movie as well. And to get Jim Carrey to play him, just perfection when it comes to the wacky element that they were going for. So where do I rank him? Let's go have a look. So for me, Jim Carrey's Riddler. I'm going to put in the great here. I just think it's a fun incarnation of the character. It's fun, wacky, and fits. So for me, he goes in the great tier. And you didn't disappoint. You let five people die. Then, you let Dent take your place. Now we move to Heath Ledger's Joker from The Dark Knight. And I tell you what, it's just an absolute incredible performance. It really is, and that's why he won the Oscar. Uh, because it's just absolutely marvelous. He was the perfect yin to yang for Batman. He just fit perfectly. And the way that Heath Ledger played the Joker was just absolutely incredible. Having this very menacing, intimidating feeling, but this very unpredictability about his Joker. You didn't know what he was going to do at any moment. That's the Joker. You don't know he's unpredictable. And I thought Heath Ledger knew that. Nolan knew that. And the way he was able to bring that out, you just thought, he's unhinged. He is the Joker. He is the man that is Batman's nemesis. And he works perfectly in the movie. The way that he's able to manipulate the system, to manipulate Harvey Dent into turning from the White Knight to Two-Face, to becoming the thing that they couldn't let come out anymore, I thought was incredible. The design looks good. I love everything about it. And the line at the end where he says, kill you? Why would I want to do that? I need you. And it's just, it, that's the Joker. He never wants to kill Batman because he loves the Batman. He, it's the, the complete opposite of each other and they're destined to do that forever and he even says it. So where do I fit Heath Ledger's Joker in this tier list? So for me, Heath Ledger is, is always going to go in the GOAT tier. He's probably one of my favorites. He's one of my favorites, so for me, definitely in the GOAT tier. Millions of innocent people. Innocent is a strong word. Around Up next, we have Talia El Ghul from Dark Knight Rises. Look, I'm going to be completely honest. Completely honest. I think she's the weakest thing about the Dark Knight Rises. I really do. And her character is just not flushed out at all. She has, like just comes out of nowhere. This twist is just like, bam, it's there. And it's like, okay, that doesn't really make sense. But okay, it is what it is. So this is a pretty quick one for me. Let's go over and have a look at where Talia ranks because I just don't think she has much character, to be honest. And for me, she goes in the mayor character. Not quite what were they thinking, but the mayor character because she didn't really have much character. I call this little number Bane. Now we move to Bane from Batman versus... Uh, Batman versus Robin. Batman and Robin, sorry. Bane. I mean... Do I really need to say anything about this incarnation of Bane? Um, from the design, which is kind of like... Okay, good then. Don't know what they were thinking there. From the character that is in existence. Don't know what they're thinking there. To completely abandoning who Bane is as a character with his intelligence. Because Bane is actually quite intelligent. He's the guy that broke the brain. Like, he broke Batman. And he's quite intelligent, but he just turned into this brainless muscle man. That's really what he is. So I think you kind of know where I'm going with this. So let's have a look at where I put Bane from Batman vs. Robin. I mean, was it any other? Was it any obvious? What were they thinking? 
What were they thinking with this Bane? So I'm just put him in there. This chance. Unbiased. Unprejudiced. Fair. Now we move to Two Face from the Nolan trilogy. Aaron Eckhart plays Harvey Dent. And I tell you what, I really like this Two Face character. What I like about it is the whole entire movie, we are following Harvey Dent and his rise to fame of being this incredible good guy that is breaking the crime syndicate. He's tearing it apart. He's arresting all these people. He's the hero. And even Christian Bale, Bruce Wayne, and Batman even says it as well. He's the hero Gotham needs now. The Batman is no longer needed. He is the one that's going to step in line and clean up the streets and he can finally retire and sit down. So you have this beautiful connection with Harvey Dent. You are rooting for this guy. And when the love of his life is murdered, he just loses it. The Joker manipulates him into doing this thing. And now the fall of Harvey Dent happens. And I think it's brilliant. I think it's one of the great rises to falls that we see in a hero. You got this beautiful rise to this heroic status, to this big dip and form, right back down to becoming a villain. So where do I rank Harvey Dent? It's Two-Face from the Nolan Trilogy. For me, it goes in the great tier. I really, really like this portrayal and I think he's absolutely fantastic. For me, it goes, you know what, actually no, I'm going to put it in the god tier. I think it's an absolutely fantastic rise and fall story. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Always winterize your pipes. Now we get to Arnold's Mr. Freeze from Batman and Robin. I mean, it's kind of a highlight, don't you think, from that movie? The movie is so wacky and so bad that you kind of just like Mr. Freeze. Just, I think the design of Mr. Freeze is actually quite cool. I'm not going to lie. I think, the, I think they nailed the design. I think he looks really, really cool. It doesn't really have much else to him other than looking cool. So it's a bit hard to put him somewhere. Let's just have a look where I'm going to put him. Look, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm putting him in decent just because of the look. I think the look is cool. That's why he's there. Because it looks cool. Why? Because your father ain't around. Oh, Oz, you know Bruce Wayne. Wow. Is that right? Now we get to Falcone from The Batman. So this one, I think, worked really, really well in The Batman. I thought he was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. He normally does some of late. We see him in like the Transformers where he does funny stuff. He's this comedic character. But in this movie, The Batman, he is absolutely fantastic. He's menacing. He's intimidating. He really feels like he is the godfather of Gotham. He is the one running the underground. And he, I really like his portrayal. And I really like how he is set up throughout The Batman. And how he has ties to everything. Because it makes total sense to why he has ties. He's always trying to get you to owe him. So that you're always in debt to him. And I like that. And that is Falcone. So where would I rank the Batman's Falcone? Let's have a look. For me, he goes in the great tier. I absolutely love this portrayal and I think it's fantastic. So for me, the great tier. Stupid, simple, doodah, clueless. <laughs> now we move to Tommy Lee Jones, Two-Face from Batman Forever. Look, I like Tommy Lee Jones. And I think I get this movie, Batman Forever, is quite wacky. It's quite fantasy-like. But for me, his Two-Face just doesn't feel like Two-Face. If you know what I mean? I feel like the way that he laughs, the way that he's so giddy and wacky, just does not fit who Two-Face is. I think Two-Face is more of a serious kind of guy that is like pretty straight. It's either black or white. It's either 50-50. Heads or tails. That's it. There's no giddy laughing and being all this like... <laughs> <laughs> like it just it felt like it was a mix of Joker and the Riddler that they were trying to go with and they kind of met in between and to me it I, I I want to like it more but I just can't it just I don't know it just it didn't work for me so yeah let's go see where I rank him now for me I'm gonna put him I'm gonna put Tommy Lee Jones two-face 
in the decent category. I think it's a decent portrayal, but again, I don't think it's quite Two-Face. I think it's more along the lines of two characters meeting in between because of the wacky element of the movie, but I don't mind it, so for me, it goes in the decent tier. When the cops to take a closer look at the drugs they seized, I know about your experiments with the inmates of your nut house. Now we move to Nolan's Falcone in his trilogy. And I tell you what, I don't mind his portrayal as well. I think he is kind of menacing as well. He sort of feels like he runs the underground in Batman Begins as well. He sort of feels like, you know, you don't want to be in the streets while he's there. And he he's not on screen too much, but he's not as connected as the Batman one. He's kind of like just this... He, there's a lot of things talked about him, but we don't really see him do that much or anything like that. But again, I still like this portrayal and I still think it fits perfectly for The Batman Begins as well. So where do I rank it? Let's have a look. For me, I'm going to put it in the decent tier. I would like to see more screen time, personally. So, but for me, it's going to sit in the decent tier. Jack is dead, my friend. You can call me Joker. Now we move to Jack's Joker in the first Batman movie, Batman 89. Look, I like Jack's portrayal. Again, it's different from Heath's, Heath's Joker and it's different from Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. And that's what I like. It's this different one. It's more of a gangster sort of vibe when it comes to this Joker. And I like that. He still feels menacing. He still feels like he's the opposite to Batman. He still understands what Joker is as a character. And it works in that tone with that movie. And I like the whole original story of how he became the Joker. It fits as well. And I like when he does become the Joker. I think Jack does a fantastic job and really laid the groundwork moving forward for what the Joker could become. And now we see these all other different takes taking place of the Joker. And that's what I like about it. So for me, let's see where I rank Jack's Joker. Now for me, Jack's Joker, I'm going to put it in the great tier. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I like the design. I like the character himself. And he fits perfectly in the movie. So for me, he goes in the great tier. You can speak freely. Oh, I don't mind you at all. Now we move to Poison Ivy from Batman and Robin. Can you believe Batman and Robin has three villains in it? Like three major villains from the rogues gallery of Batman. And Poison Ivy's there now as well. So where do I, what do I think of Poison Ivy? I think uh, it was an interesting choice to team her up with Bane. Really was. Very interesting. I get what they were trying to do. But that movie is just so bad that I just don't think... Performances were quite. It's just, it's. Just, I don't know. Poison Ivy is a weird one because I like the portrayal, but then I don't at the same time. And the more I watch it, the more I just feel like Poison Ivy could be so much better as a character. I think the way that the character was written just didn't work. Having them try to seduce Batman and that, I, I, I guess. Okay, we're gonna go down that route, but um, okay, we'll go down that. We'll, 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 we'll go down there. That's what they kind of do in this movie. The design, okay. It's okay. It looks looks okay. Um, I get what they were trying to do. I do get, but I just, I don't know. I, it could just be the writing is just so bad in that movie that it just falls apart. But let's go see where I put Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy for me, I'm going to put in the mare category. I just, I just, I, I just don't think she works that well. So for me, she goes in the mayor car car category. Now we move to Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman from Batman Returns. And I tell you what, I like her. I like her Catwoman. I think she's absolutely incredible. Uh, she obviously has the look about her. She really brought that whole Look at me, I'm really, really hot, but I'm going to beat your ass if you do anything. She really brought that, and I like that as well. She's probably the only Catwoman so far in the movies that are actually portrayed as a bad person and not a good person. Because we have Anne Hathaway's, who's pretty much a good guy. And then we have Zoe Kravitz, who's pretty much a good guy as well. So this is really the only bad villain Catwoman that we've had. I like the suit. I think the suit works. I like how she has 
the character arc she goes through in Batman Returns as well. I think it's very effective and it works. And I like how she was in Batman Returns. I think I don't think there's anything really wrong about her performance or her character itself. I think she fit in that movie. So let's go see where I put Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Now for me, her Catwoman, I'm going to put in the great tier because I actually really like her. So for me, she goes in the great tier. If you are justice, please do not lie. Now we move to Paul Dano's Riddler from The Batman. And I tell you what, I really like his character in The Batman. I think this was absolutely a perfect casting and a perfect choice for character to use as a villain. What I really like is Matt Reeves knew and understood that the Riddler isn't a physical threat to Batman. So what did he do? He used him as a mental threat. He used his brain to just, you know, become this villain, this super villain towards Batman by trying to be outsmarting him, trying to get Batman to work with him. Now what I really like about the Riddler a lot is he believes he's the hero of the story. He believes he's working with Batman. Him and Batman are working together. And he feels like he's cleaning the streets of Gotham. He is ridding the hierarchy of Gotham of the corrupt. Which I thought is an absolutely fantastic touch as well. The performance from Paul Dano is world class. When he's having that exchange with Batman, oh, dude, that is just bone chilling. Like this guy believed him and the Batman were working together to destroy the corruption throughout Gotham. He thought he was the hero. He thought he was cleansing Gotham. It's absolutely fantastic and I think he's just a fantastic Riddler and a fantastic villain. So where do I rank him in this list? For me, the Riddler goes in the God tier. I love this character, I love the portrayal and I think it is absolutely fantastic. This great city, it will endure. And finally, we get to Tom Hardy's Bane from Dark Knight Rises, which I absolutely love his portrayal of Bane. I think that the way he looks as well is just brilliant as well. It works on so many levels for me. I think if you didn't have the twist with Raza or with... Um, Talia, I think it worked perfectly fine as having Bane as the main villain. I think he was menacing. He was Bane that I knew. He was smart. He was outsmarting everyone. He had a plan. He has motive. He's come back to basically send Gotham to what Ra's al Ghul wanted. To reset everything. To destroy Gotham because it could never be saved. His interaction with Batman, the way he broke the bat as well, and his whole idea that he's talking to Batman saying like, dude, I'm the shadows. I was born in it. You just adopted it. Like, it's just so good. The lines that Tom Hardy does, he's just brilliant. The, just everything about his Bane character, I really, really liked. So where do I rank him in this tier list? For me, I'm going to put him in the God tier as well. I really like this Bane character and I love Tom Hardy's portrayal. And I think it understands who Bane is and it gives me everything I wanted in that character. So there you have it, that is my list of the Batman villains in the movies. Let me know in the comments below, what did you guys think of my list? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or what is your list as well? I want to know where you guys rank these villains. If I miss someone, let me know. I will let you know where I would put them. I think I got them all. I'm not 100% sure because, they, you know, sometimes, sometimes we make errors and we miss people. It's very hard. Uh, but let me know in the comments below, what is your list as well? Smash that like button, click subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe. Peace out.